talk about Excel, I'm going to begin uh, the discussion by talking about uh, the ribbon, which is uh, the strip that appears at the top of the Excel sheet when you open it. So here I have the ribbon, and uh, I, this whole thing right across here is what's called the ribbon. And then we have tabs which open up uh, different ribbon uh, content and then depending on what computer you're using uh, on my Mac I also have these tabs right up here um, now most of the items on these tabs up here maybe all of them uh, are actually duplicated at some point inside the ribbon so let me just quickly go over the ribbon I'm not going to go over everything because much of what's on the ribbon I don't regularly use. So I'm only going to go over the items which, uh, which I use most frequently. So with that, uh, we have the Home tab. Now, on the Home tab, we have right in the, uh, the left-hand side the controls which are typical of applications in Microsoft Office. We can pick the font, the font size, color, uh, background, um, uh, the uh, uh, orientation of the text on the page, and we have those options which you might also find in Microsoft Word, for instance. We also have uh, other features such as Merge and Center that you might not find in Microsoft Word. So Merge and Center is a way that we could take several cells, and these are called the cells. Each one of these rectangles is a cell in Excel, and we can take several cells, and if we hit Merge and Center, then those cells are all combined. And then if we type something, so I'll click on the cell and I'll type something, and because I've centered what is typed appears in this in in the center of the merged cell so that gives you some idea what's going on here now i could click on that notice that this is what is selected in the ribbon if i check here then the what i've typed then uh, becomes left justified uh, in the in the cell so I can change that if I so choose. Uh, this item right in here is how I would pick the format for numbers that I might put in cell. So for example, let me just put a number in here, uh, let's say 15, there. Now I can go up here and I can select there and I could make it currency. So uh, oh, I sorry, I skipped that currency, and now I get $15. Uh, or I could make it uh, a percentage. So 15 is 1,500%, uh, for instance. So I can choose the format uh, that is used to present the numbers that I type in the cells. So let me go back to general here, which is a non-specific format. Now I can move along, continue moving to the right, and uh, probably as I go along here, the one particular item that I would use most frequently would come under auto sum, because right here, this is what I can use to start inputting formulas into the cells in Excel. And uh, so there are several common functions here. Uh, where I can do a sum, average, and I can show you how to use these. There are more functions here, which all sorts of functions pop up, trig functions and other functions. So the auto sum is something that I, can, that I use a lot. So that's the home tab. Let's look at insert. An insert, what I use most frequently are uh, these items related to charts or tables that I put in Excel. So uh, if I'm displaying data in a chart, uh, I might use typically 
whatever the recommended chart is, and, and here there's not much as far as recommended charts because I only have one cell with one number in it here. I can go here and pick um, column charts. I can go here and pick scatter charts. And I would say by, by far, for me, with my applications, scatter charts are the most commonly used charts. Now, Excel also, if I move across here, I also use text box. So when I'm uh, setting up an Excel sheet and I want to make it easy for someone else to read my Excel sheet and not have to decode what the sheet is supposed to be doing, I frequently use text boxes because with the text box here, there I'll click on text box and uh, Oh, come on. There, here we go. Now, right in here, then I can type something. So I'll type something again. And so all I got to do is learn how I can't spell because of my background in engineering and science. So I type something, and, uh, and then I could go right up here, and I could change the font and the font size, and I see that I misspelled something. And um, then I can, uh, usually when I put in a text box, I will change the background so as to hide the structure of the spreadsheet that appears underneath the text box. So I might go here and pick that, so that just blocks that all out, making the text box look a bit neater. So, text box is one I use a lot in the uh, ribbon. Uh, okay, so, uh, so that's insert. Page layout, I actually don't remember the last time I used page layout. And um, probably the one you might want to use uh, if you use any of these, and this actually appears in multiple places, are these boxes right here for grid lines and headings. And um, if I have this spreadsheet out, I'm trying to make it look neat or whatever, or I want to take the spreadsheet and include it in some other document and I want it to look nice, I might hide the grid lines like that, or I might hide the, uh, the, the, the letters that go above the columns and the numbers that go to the left of the rows, and I do that right here by clicking uh, headings and unclicking view. Okay, so there, there. let me put it back. Formulas is um, uh, something, uh, when they talk about formulas, typically they're referring to what goes inside a cell. So I can put a formula in a cell uh, right here, I can click on the cell, or I can click right up here, which is a, uh, the, the bar where I can, I can type the formula up here. Watch as I'll put equals. It also appears in the cell here. Well, every formula begins with an equals. If you don't put an equals, you're not putting in a formula. So equals, and then I could sum what appears in two cells or more, for example. I could say equals this, so whatever is in this cell, which is cell C5, and then I could put plus, and then I could put whatever is in this cell, which is D5, and then I hit return. Now, there's nothing in C5 or D5, so the answer is zero. Notice when I click on the cell, the formula comes up. Now watch what happens, I could go into C5 and I'll put one, and I click on D5 when I put 2, and then what appears in this with the formula C5 plus D5 is 1 plus 2 or 3. And then I can put many different functions into uh, the statement for a function. I could put a sine and cosine and, uh, and statistics functions and all kinds of functions there. Okay. Now, let's look at um, the data is a uh, 
tab that I use a lot, and in particular, um, two elements on the data tab that I uh, use quite a bit. One is what if, and we'll talk about how to do some of these what if statements later, and in particular, goal seek is one I really use a lot. So goal seek, which I'll explain later. The other one I use is solver, and solver is an add-in to Excel. So you, depending on the version of Excel that you have, if solver does not appear there, you're going to have to figure out how to install add-ins. Now, the way that I always recommend to my students when they're trying to find how to do something uh, in a piece of software in an application and they don't know how to do it, I really recommend that people go to YouTube and they type in the question because the YouTube videos I found to be much more helpful than finding a, uh, a, a long uh, a sequence of paragraphs um, in a Google page uh, that explain how to do the same thing. The paragraphs I find are more difficult to read and understand than watching someone doing it in a YouTube video. So uh, if you want to know how to install Solver on your version of Excel, then I would go to YouTube and then if that fails, go to Google and type the same thing. Now the biggest problem that I run into in doing that with Excel is that uh, different versions of Excel have different configurations. So there can be different functions in the ribbon. So what's in the data tab on one ribbon might be on the home tab on another ribbon and so on. So the fact that Microsoft changes the contents of the ribbon from one version of Excel to another uh, is sometimes bothersome. And so you will go online and you'll find instructions for doing something in Excel which do not apply to your own version of Excel. So with that now, let's see, there's a data, and I mentioned the two items I like mostly in data. There's review, which I don't know that I've ever used, and view, which I use from time to time. In particular, Zoom, and that as I'm talking about spreadsheets, I may want to uh, zoom to, let's say, 200%, which causes this to happen. So it's easier for you to see what I'm doing uh, in Excel by using the zoom. And there's a few other things. Notice that grid lines and headings appears yet again. And so I can change that here. So as I uh, mentioned, that sometimes different uh, versions of the ribbon and, and in the same version of the ribbon, uh, items might appear in two different places uh, in a ribbon under two different tabs. So with that is my uh, introduction to the ribbon. And maybe one more thing I want to mention uh, before I end the video is that how to input numbers into columns. Now something simple. Suppose I want the number one to appear in every cell going down column A. So I can type one there like this. And then um, I click on the cell and grab the, the corner of the box and pull it down. And as I do that, it fills in ones everywhere. That's convenient. However, suppose I don't, don't want ones everywhere. I want one, two, three going down. So to do that, I can put one and then I put two in the cell below. Then I can click one and shift click two. So I click on both cells. Then I drag down and watch what happens here is that it now automatically increments the numbers in the cell by one each. If I had done this differently, I have one and then let's say three there no, I, don't, I didn't want to do that. Let me 
make that one again, you know, 31. It's, things are getting out of hand. One, and then right here, I'll click here, make it three. Now, shift click, now grab both and see what's happening here. Now notice there's that little number that appears to the right and below of the cross sign. That number is telling me what's going to appear in this box. So now the numbers go one, three, five, seven, nine, and this last number was 21. So uh, when I have regular patterns like this, I select multiple cells. And again, how I do that is I click on the first cell and then I shift click on the next cell. That, that will select both of these and I can drag down like this. Now something else to notice, I can also drag across. So for example, I could click here, shift click here, and then drag across. Notice the number appearing here is a nine, 13, and so on. So I do that, then as I move across the columns, uh, they each increase by four over the number that's in the previous column. Okay, now with that, now notice one final thing. I have my uh, beautiful uh, face appearing here in this uh, video screen at the bottom. Um, I'm not going to be doing that normally and I just put it here uh, so you can see what a frightful person I appear to be. Um, if we are streaming videos online, just that little video of me talking, my talking head, actually uses up too much bandwidth and can cause problems in uh, online streaming. So I won't be showing this very much in the future. So next time.